Hi, this is Misha, and today's video is on Argentine military service sidearms. So we have uh, three of them here today. We have a 1927 Sistema, which is a licensed Colt. We have a Ballister Molina, which is an unlicensed quasi-clone of the uh, Colt. And we have an FM high power, which is a licensed FN high power from Belgium. So that we would do these today while we have them. So beginning with the 1911 style in Argentine military service. In 1916, after the U.S. had adopted the 1911 in 1911, Argentina became interested. It too adopted the original Colt 1911 in 1916, calling it the Modelo 1916. Initially, it would purchase 10,000. It liked them, and it would purchase more. Now, when the U.S. went to the 1911 A1 in 1924, Argentina would soon follow suit, and they would adopt the 1911 A1 with its updates as the Modelo 1927, which is what I'm holding here. Now this pretty much has all of the A1 updates. It has the shorter checkered trigger. It has the newer style synthetic grips. It has the checkered and arched mainspring in the back with lanyard loop. It also has the extended beaver tail to grip safety. Obviously, it's not as extended as newer 1911s, but compared to the original, it is a little bit longer. Now, one aspect they kept from the original 1911, they went to the large spur, or they kept the large spur style hammer, and they checkered it here. So that, to me, is more of a 1911 feature, but I like it. I can appreciate why they did it. Other than that, it's just your basic 1911. Now, initially, they would buy these from Colt. And then in the 1930s, they would uh, purchase a production license. Now, before World War II got kicked off, Argentina would manage to produce about 38,000 of these. Now, during that war, Argentina was ostensibly neutral, although they were at times sympathetic to the Germans and at other times sympathetic towards the Allies. It actually wasn't until uh, April of 45 that they declared war on Germany. So, they kind of played it neutral, so their situation in World War II was a little unique and precarious. But after the war, they would uh, manufacture more of these, and from 1947, through about 1966, they would uh, build about 75,000 more. So that would, they would produce over 100,000 of the, the Colt um, licensed copies. Not a whole lot more to say on this gun. It's a Colt 1911A1. We have a video on the uh, evolution of the Colt Browning model. So if you're interested in that, check that out. We just wanted to show you an actual version produced in Argentina. These are basically fully parts compatible with um, standard 1911s. As with these older guns, there was always some hand fitting required even at the factory. So sometimes parts might need to be file fit or something to fit. But it, you know, they, they produced them to the original Colt specifications and uh, it was a licensed product. So, you know, worked out okay. However, the next 45 ACP pistol that Argentina would adopt into the military was not a licensed copy. This is the Ballister Molina. This is an indigenous design from Argentina. Now when they were going into production for the 1927 in the 30s, they wanted more pistols with war on the horizon but they were trying to figure out ways to, uh, to make them cheaper. The Argentine government, the Argentine military wanted uh, more and cheaper pistols. 
Now they would keep on making the Colt Sistemas, but a company called Half Daza, Argentina, would come up with this. Now Half Daza, they made engines and very high quality engines uh, for both automobiles and uh, aircraft and other things. So they, they, they were a very mechanically oriented firm. Well, the two owners of the company, last names of Ballister and uh, last name of Molina, would uh, sit down in 1937. They would tear apart an original Colt production, 1911, and they would look at every little part, and they would say, can we make this cheaper, easier, while not sacrificing you know, reliability, durability, accuracy, so on and so forth. And the Ballister Molina pistols, what they came up with. These went into production, well, they were adopted in, by the Argentine military in 1938. Production started either 38 or 39, take your pick. But they were in production by World War II. It is essentially a 1911. In fact, it uses the same seven-shot mags. The, bar the barrels are very similar and actually are pretty well interchangeable. But otherwise, the details are different with these. These are a little bit heavier and just a smidge longer. So like two ounces heavier and, and a, just a smidge longer than the 1911 because of some simplifications they did. Most notably from this view, you have these slide serrations. They actually remind me a lot of those found on the uh, earlier Russian Tokarev uh, TT-30 and TT-33 pistols. They're larger with finer serrations in the middle. They were just a little bit faster to machine compared to the mini spine serrations on the Colt and the Sistema. Yes, kitty, they agree. We have a somewhat simplified hammer. And no, we, we lost the spur and the serrations on it are also simplified. The, uh, this, um, the uh, 1927 had checkering. This has just simple serrations on the smaller hammer. One of the biggest things they changed, we still have an arched and checkered mainspring housing area here. Although it's no longer really removable, it's part of the frame and there's no grip safety. The beaver tail is actually part of the frame. So they deleted this whole grip safety assembly and all these parts to save money. We still have a standard thumb safety here. It too has simplified uh, ridges on it as opposed to checkering. We have wood grips. These are not interchangeable with Colts because the screws are in different locations, but they just went to simple production wood grips. And the trigger. This looks similar to an original 1911 trigger. It's smooth in the front, it's a little bit longer. But instead of pulling straight back, it actually pivots on a roll pin. Now they borrowed this feature from the Spanish Star. It's a simplified trigger arrangement. All these things added up to a gun that was pretty much exactly the same to a soldier's point of view as the 1911, with the only really difference being the grip safety, which is often a, a part of the 1911 design that's been criticized. But other, you know, it, it still handles the same. The controls are in the same areas. It still fires 45 ACP. It's close enough in weight and size that it would work in the same holsters, took the same magazines. So this is kind of a wartime substitute standard that they would adopt is uh, to supplement the, uh, the 1927 in service. Between uh, 1938 and 1953, Half Daza would produce about 113,000 of these, so a pretty substantial number. Some were used by other South American nations. They were, they were sold to them. Actually, between uh, ten and 15,000 were sold to the British SOS and um, would be used by commandos, clandestine. They were, they were pretty much unmarked guns. They were definitely not made in the Commonwealth or America, so they had plausible deniability, if nothing else. So these were sold to the Allies during the war. 
As I said, production would continue until 1953, and then Half-Dazzle would close, and then these would go out of production. But the military in Argentina had so many that this would stay in service well into the 1970s. They would start to be surplused out then, with the, with the remainder surplused out by the 80s. Yeah, no. When the Ballester Molina was started to go out of service, they kept the 1927 in a little bit longer. There were still quite a few of these being used when the Falkland, Falklands War kicked off against Britain. But by the 80s, the, the 1927 was also being surplus. Now what replaced both of these pistols was the, uh, the high power. As with a lot of uh, NATO member nations, Argentina went to the high power in the Cold War era. It was, it was pretty much as close to a standard issue gun as the NATO alliance had. Argentina would initially purchase high powers from FN in Belgium in 1960. They liked them so much that in 1968 they contracted with FN for a production license. You have to remember if you look at our other videos, by this point they were already making FALs under contract from FN. So it was a you know, logical step to start producing the pistols. They would begin producing the high power in Argentina. It's a more or less exact copy of an FN circa 1965. So they would have a lot of the Mark II features, so on and so forth. As FN would improve the design, they, they would introduce improvements uh, and keep pretty much up to date. They would, um, they would keep their production rolling through well, license production continued up until 1989, and then things get a little murky. The licensing lapses, time goes by. They start making the guns that are often referred to as the Model 90 that aren't exactly licensed copies. And that's when F uh, FM started to deviate more from the high power. They would uh, simplify the slide serrations. They would get away from this uh, slide cut where they where it tapers down and have more of a straight 1911 style. Some of these would have a lanyard ring down here, some like this one would not. But generally speaking, these were just licensed production copies of the Belgian high bar. It's a single action only. No grip safety, of course. Typical thumb safety here. Fixed sights, and of course a 13 round magazine, double stack, very high capacity for that day and time. Had the reliability and, and all that you would expect from an FM browning design product. And uh, FM in Argentina was known for uh, high quality production. But this was the service gun that replaced the Ballister Molina in the 1927 in Argentina. They're actually still, at least up through the 90s, making them. The first ones that came into America were brought in by Arms Corps. They bring in about 10,000 in the late 80s. These would be kind of a mix of uh, new production slides on uh, military uh, contract leftover frames. After Arms Corps, a lot of people would bring these in, including Century Arms in the 90s. And you'll see a lot of Argentine high powers, and there's quite a few variations in slide roll markings and manufacturing standards and, and, and all of that stuff. So don't be surprised if not all the high powers uh, from Argentina look exactly like this. In fact, a lot of them don't. There's all kinds of different configurations. But yeah, I thought, we thought we'd just kind of show you the... Um, Argentine service guns. As you can tell, uh, really the most unique one is the Ballister Molina because it was designed inside Argentina. The others are licensed copies. But yeah, that is about it. If you have any questions, please post them below. We really appreciate you tuning in. If you like the video, please click the button. Please subscribe if you haven't. And uh, this is Misha, and uh, we'll catch you next time.